name is Sarah Nelson, and today I'll, present, I'll be presenting quality of character leadership. Leadership is guiding a group or organization toward a common goal. It sounds simple in theory. All it takes is one person to lead others, and everyone will follow the direction of the leader. If only it were that easy. Leadership takes skill. It requires an individual to be willing to stand out before the rest. A productive person may hold certain characteristics of a leader, but the skills of leadership are developed over time through experiences that a leader has encountered. One can be productive and never be a leader. However, to be a leader, one must move to action, seek results, and be productive. So what is leadership? Leadership is the ability to influence others. This influence can be positive or negative. Leadership is the ability to build positive relationships with those around them and also motivate. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Leadership is everywhere. Steve Jobs, the Pope, Martin Luther King, even Lou Holtz are leaders in their time and in their era. Steve Jobs is a leader in the innovation of technology, um, while Lou Holtz is a leader on the athletic field. Different areas, but both very effective and both impacting many, many people. Qualities of a leader include being competent, caring, responsible, positive, empathetic to those around them, decision makers, hard workers, dedicated, humble, and of course, passionate. A quality, the quality leadership is the ability to help people be the best versions of themselves. The ability to help others reach achievement or goals that they wouldn't necessarily reach on their own. Leadership in the Bible, Proverbs 11:14, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. And also Luke 6:31, treat even in leadership, we must treat others the same way you would want them to treat you. The role of a leader in athletics, a quote from our, of, from our text, the primary role of a goal is to build lifetime character traits in the young people who are in their care. Hope helping young men and women understand the difference between right and wrong behavior and teaching them to have the courage to live by those standards at, mu makes the act of coaching an expression of love. A few other quotes. Now this is something to think about. As a coach, are you a confidence builder or a confidence cutter? Confidence builders teach young people that confidence and preparation go hand in hand. They lift their players up for their effort to prepare. Leaders are coaches with passion for developing people, not players. Leaders inspire people through a shared vision and create an environment where people feel valued and fulfilled. So who are the leaders in athletics? There's many leaders among us, but some of these leaders include administrators, even teachers, head coaches, assistant coaches, and players. Um, these players could be older players in the program, and they could be younger players in the program. Um, I don't think it's necessary to, to limit players to being the old, just because they're the oldest, they're the leaders. Um, there's always leaders that are, that are young amongst the group, but they're just developing in their skills. So it's always good to remember that leadership at the top is very important. So be an example for your players. Be confident in your leadership. Keep expectations consistent. Most importantly, the most powerful leadership tool you have is your own personal example. So I have a video um, that I'm going to share. The Baltimore Ravens' John Harbour discusses servant leadership. If you'll be patient with me, I will get that video up and going. Position, but it's a pretty simple idea, right? Uh, 
uh, do whatever you can to help others be their best and see where that takes you. You know, and it really shouldn't be about where it takes you, it's where it takes us. You know, what do we have a chance to accomplish together? Can we build something together that is special and that has a chance to last? Can we make it about something bigger than just maybe the bottom line even, although we have to win games. And we tell our guys all the time, you know, we have, our, our mission is to win the next game. Our mission is to build a dynasty. You know, I think that's business and sports and whatever, you have a mission. But within that, maybe the broader mission is, you know, how we are around one another. And if we can help each other accomplish what we all need to accomplish together, we have a chance to be great. It's tough to decide where to spend your time and who to spend your time with. For me, it's somewhat orderly because we have coordinators, we have coaches, and we have quarterbacks, and I can kind of pick my spots, but it kind of comes to you every day more than that. You know, we have a lot of hours in the day. A lot of hours in the day where sometimes it's easier to kind of sit back and hide in your office, maybe get involved in some paperwork or something like that, when really what you need to be doing as a leader is you need to be going out and finding what, who you need to be helping do what they do and try, try to help them do it well. So it kind of comes to you. You know, where are we not playing as well? Is our defensive line struggling against the run a little bit? Has someone had a personal problem? You know, where do you need to inject yourself and be involved with people? But one of the things I found to be most powerful is something that my boss taught me. If I'm not sure what to ask or not sure what to say, there are four powerful words. What do you think? So as I work my way around the building and I get into a conversation with somebody, I'm not exactly sure how to approach them. I can always say, how's it going? And what do you think? You know, how can we be better? You know, how can you make us better? Have you got a good idea? You know, are you happy? You know, are, we, are we at our best? It's pretty amazing what people will tell you when you give them that opportunity. The first thing is coming to the realization that you don't drive the car all the time. You know, you've got to be smart, you've got to be tough, you've got to make good decisions and use good judgment, all those kind of things. But you've got to have faith, trust, belief. You've got to empower the people around you. You've got to believe in them. You know, trust but verify, absolutely. Be on top of things without question. But you put a group of people around you that you really love and you really care about, it's pretty easy to serve them. You know, it's pretty easy to want to see them at their best. And you've got to check your own heart. I think when we get into the day-to-day -day conversations, and sometimes we all fall down, but you get into that day-to-day -day conversations, you've got to ask yourself, hey, where's my heart on this? And where am I coming from on this? Do I really care about this person? And if you really want them to feel like you care about them, the best way to do that is to actually care about them. with the people and the players around us. Coach Harbaugh talked a lot about building relationships and just getting an understanding of what's going on throughout your team and how, how things can be better. Um, I think that's really important um, in coaching. So in conclusion, leaders have the power to influence others in the most positive or negative ways. Make a connection with people. Talk to your players. Find out what they, what they like, what they don't like, on or off the field. And remember, how a leader treats others will determine their effectiveness and legacy. Be the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Thank you.